Okay, so this is part two of the um, Unreal Engine vehicle tutorial. I'm assuming that uh, you've got some sort of vehicle rigged up at this point. Um, if you want to use something like this, just check out part one. You'll make this um, really great, really great trapezoid car. And but as long as you have something that's rigged up and you have some kind of like you know skeleton here, um, it should be good. So I'm gonna close my uh, and get Unreal open. Start a new project. Um, just because I like the default level that they give you, I'm gonna start with the blueprint, blueprint flying level. We'll call this uh, Trapezoid Mobile or something. Or Vehicle Tutorial. Okay, cool. So the first thing we're gonna do is actually um, import the mesh that we created in the last video. So we'll go into meshes. Okay, cool. Now we should be able to actually import this thing. So we do want to actually check the advanced settings here. Um, I I click uh, I enable import rigid mesh here. Uh, preserve smoothing groups. That's fine. Create the physics asset. That's cool. Actually, we'll tweak that a little bit, but that's fine. Um, I didn't make skeleton, so this is irrelevant. Yeah. Okay, cool. Um, the physics asset, I actually am not sure how much this matters at this point, but I just, I think that for consistency's sake, I like to make something that I think looks correct. Um, so I'll actually clear all these and create new bodies using the single convex hull it seems to look nice we can just simulate that guy yeah great Actually, gonna I can do this with blueprints. You could totally do it with C plus um, plus. I haven't. I don't think I've, I haven't fully done one with C plus plus only. Uh, the gist of it is you subclass a wheel vehicle, and you use the wheel vehicle movement component to actually steer and adjust the throttle. So in this case, we're gonna subclass um, wheel vehicle to create our blueprint. Call it something like. Uh, Trapezoid, mobile, whatever. Open that guy up. And let's take a look at the defaults. Um, we don't have an animation blueprint yet, but we'll set one up. We could set a mesh, select our trapezoid car. Most of the vehicle defaults are appropriate. I don't think uh, we have to change very many of these, or any for that matter. We do want to do wheel setups. Um, I won't do them just now. I'll come back to this later because we're actually going to create our own. We're going to subclass vehicle wheel and use our own um, blueprint for that. So everything else looks cool for now. Uh, if you take a look at the default setup for a uh, subclassed uh, wheeled vehicle is um, you get a vehicle movement component actually uh, has a relationship with the four wheels I'm using. In this case, I'm actually going to cast it to a four-wheeled vehicle component when we get into the actual event graph stuff. Uh, and the root mesh, you just get your very great car. Cool. So I'm going to do some wheel setup now. And I'm, I'm using pretty... I'm actually using a bunch of values that I got from uh, GeoDev's vehicle tutorial. Uh, so I'm just going to go with those for now. They seem to be working fairly well. Um, I'll keep this order. We actually do like, as we start to index the wheels, I'm going to keep this order of the zeroth wheel is going to be the left front and the third is going to be the right rear. So we'll go like left front, right front, left rear, right rear. So I, I do know what my 
uh, bone names are, but if you need to check, just go over to your mesh. And I think you can just open that guy up and you'll have your bones listed on the left of you. And we made a root bone and we've got like left underscore front, etc. So this will be the left front. Been using a steering angle of 50, max brake torque of like a million. Uh, I think a damping rate of two and a mass of 20. So just go ahead and set that up for all these. You know, whatever order you pick here, just keep it in mind as we correlate, we have to correlate that order across a couple of different contexts. This is the most exciting part of the video. You watch me type. Cool, that's all I'm gonna do for now. Um, that pretty much sets up our vehicle movement component for the time being. We can also get into, you know, what we can actually get into now is um, while we're in this blueprint, we can look at how you will uh, capture the input. So something hitting like W on the keyboard for forward throttle and um, A and D for steering. So in order to set that up, you want to go into the uh, project settings, the input section, and you're going to extend the um, axis mappings. I have some mappings in here because I use the flying template. I'll just get rid of these and start fresh. I'll use something like a increase throttle. I'll, first I'll crash. Let's see if... I don't know if we... I think we lost everything. Cool. Thank you. Alright, so we're going to re-import our mesh. That's great, let me delete this. So you get to learn about how to deal with a crash. Super, it's super cool. All right, uh, so that was in the desktop, oh, this little guy. All looks good. It's cool, we got the physics asset. Let's set that up again. This time we're going to save somewhat neurotically. Okay, cool. Let's see if we sell our blueprint. We do. I don't think he has anything set. All right, so I'll just do this again. So set the trapezoid mobile. Still don't have an animation blueprint. Our wheel settings were saved. That's good. Cool. Um, we're gonna go over here and actually do our input mapping. So increase throttle did save, and we're gonna select W as our forward throttle. And I actually haven't um, set up reverse yet, but I'll throw D in there just in case. And then we want to add um, steer right. And we'll use uh, sorry, we'll use D for this. We'll use S for reverse here. A for left, make sure you set that to negative one. Cool, set those as default. Now we can actually use these um, events in our blueprint. So the first thing we want to do is actually get the vehicle movement component. So 
that's actually you actually get that um, as the default component here. That's this guy, the vehicle movement component. Uh, that thing has a relationship with the wheels. So from this, we can say set throttle and we can uh, set steering. So that's cool. So we're going to actually use the um, input events. So axis, yeah, increase throttle. So when throttle changes, execute set throttle input, pass its value. Do the same for steer right. Passing the value into the steering for the vehicle wheel component, or rather the vehicle movement component. Um, so that's it for now. And we can give this a try. We haven't set up any of our wheels animations or anything like that, but I'll show you how to set. So you want to set this as the default. It's set to plane because it's the flying example. So we'll set it to our car. Just try not to blow up my MacBook. And you can tell that we're in some sort of vehicle, but we can't go anywhere. Let's quickly set up a camera. Just put a spring arm in here. Cool. Uh, for the camera, I think you get better results if you disable that's setting the use controller view rotation. Um, just put them back here. Yeah, that should be cool. Yeah, that's better. Okay, cool. So nothing happens. I press forward, nothing happens. So we're actually going to go ahead and set up our um, animation animation blueprint and then reference that from the uh, vehicle blueprint. First, we're going to crash. Okay, cool. We saved everything that time. Um, so I'll create the animation blueprint actually in the um, I'll just extend it from the mesh here and then move it. So we'll create an anim blueprint. So you right click on the mesh, the skeletal mesh, create an anim blueprint. I prefix these like something like ABP, uh, trapezoid mobile. So this is where we're actually going to, um, have the wheels turn based on the values uh, that are passed to the wheel. So like the offset and rotation will actually cause the um, cylinders that are uh, compose our wheels to actually rotate and move with suspension and so on. So the first thing I'm gonna do is create a function call it update wheel. We're going to just actually rotate each individual wheel. So we'll pass an index to it. Uh, and then the um, return values will be like, we'll actually set uh, the offset and rotation of the wheel. Okay, cool. So then the input is going to be something like wheel index, which is an integer. The outputs will be offset, which is a vector rotation, which is a rotator. Cool. We're also going to need um, a vehicle component, vehicle movement component. Just use wheeled vehicle movement component. I'm not going to use the second one, the four wheeler. Actually, I haven't tried using the regular one. I don't think it matters. At least for our purposes. So you can go ahead and break this link here. Start with update wheel. Bring out the, oh yeah, so 
if you don't know this, you can hold control, you click on this guy, drag him in, you'll automatically get a getter. If you bring it out without clicking, without holding control, you need to select get. So we're going to get the wheels and let's see, we want um, a get on this array and we're going to use the wheel index that's passed in. So that's cool. When we actually update the wheel, the first thing we want to do is get the rotation angle. drag that off this guy get rotation angle of the wheel so we have like a selected wheel comes in a wheel index comes in we use the wheel index to identify the wheel from the vehicle movement component then we're going to get its rotation angle so that we can create a rotation for the wheel we're also going to get its steering angle And we're going to get suspension. We'll use that for position offset. Just move this guy over. And you can wire up these execs now. Basically what's happening is like calling update wheel is going to call get rotation angle, which in turn will call steer angle, which calls get suspension offset. And then you can finish with the return. Um, we'll combine the rotation angle of the wheel with the steering angle um, by passing both to a make rotation node. You want your return value for the rotation angle to be the pitch. Sort of like your vertical rotation, if you think about it, it's like your rotation about the Y axis. Um, and then you want your steering angle, which is like, you want this to be your yaw. So this is like, you know, left, right. If you're in the relative context of facing forward, um, we're just going to make a vector, make a 3D vector out of this, and break the X link. Use the so Z in Unreal is is up is like the vertical axis. So our suspension offset relative to the vehicle should be the Z index. So let that be the offset return value, and let the rotation be the Rotation return value. So yeah, that should be it for this part. So this is the update wheel function. Um, just just going to keep being paranoid about saving. Uh, next we'll do the animation graph. So this is where we want to get to some kind of final pose here. We'll start with a... Was it a mesh ref, I think is what I want. Yeah, mesh space ref pose. And we're going to transform bones. This is what we're actually going to do is handle the um, rotation and offset of each wheel bone. So in order to do this, we actually need a, we actually need some variables. So I'm going to create an offset and a rotation variable for each wheel. So for example, left front offset, and that'll be of type vector. And then we'll do right front offset, left rear, right rear. That's cool. And then we'll essentially do the same, but we'll do rotation. So less left front rotation. That's a rotator. Right front rotation. Left rear rotation. And right rear rotation. Cool. So we should have uh, four offsets four rotations. So now what we can do is using the, the cold command, drag this guy out and you have a left front offset getter and then the left front rotation getter. So we want to take those values and assign them to the modify bone node. Uh, one thing to do here also is we're not going to use scale or the alpha. So you can just unpin those or uncheck those rather. Um, Go ahead and attach the rotation, attach the left offset. Now, since we're using left front here, we want to make sure that we set the bone to left front. So just make sure that lines up. 
and actually we can just like copy these because they're mostly the same. You don't need five. So you need as many of these as you have wheels if you want to rotate them. Just change, just make sure you're changing the actual bone. So in this case, we'll do right front next. And then we'll do left rear, just kind of follow that pattern. Doesn't really, shouldn't really matter. I'm also too scared to not do it. Okay, so <clears throat> then end with right rear. And just connect this so we don't have to do it later. Cool. All right, so now you have to drag out um, the corresponding offsets and rotations. So I'll just bring out right front, left front, or rather left rear, right rear. And you can wire these up. So right front to right front, left front to left front. Right rear offset to right rear offset. That's cool. Do the same for the rotations. Bring in the right front rotation. Left rear rotation. Right rear rotation. Make sure that these are wired up too. Okay. Does not look great, but that should be all you need for now. And this is just essentially saying like, take the values of each wheel, um, apply them to the actual bone so the wheels spin. Okay, cool. So last thing to do in the animation blueprint is actually set up the event graph. Um, so I can remember the name of this. Yeah, okay, cool. Event blueprint update animation. We also want to get the vehicle movement component here. Um, this is kind of a big graph. But I think it, it should mostly make sense. Uh, oh, sorry, we don't want to do this. We want to get the pawn. Yeah, I get player pawn here. All right, cool. So we're gonna get the player pawn. We're gonna get their, uh, the associated movement component. And we're gonna cast this to a wheeled vehicle component. Right now it's, I believe it's a generic movement component. So cast to, we're using a four wheeler, so I'll just cast to that. We also are gonna use this to check validity. Uh, I got, again, I got all this from Geodev's tutorial, so I'm just like stepping through the stuff that he did, trying to explain the aspects of it that I actually understand. So here we'll actually check if the um, input object that we've retrieved, like the uh, player pawn, is valid. If so, we'll go ahead and actually execute the cast. So it's like, okay, if we have a player pawn, then let's get its movement component, cast it to a four-wheeled vehicle uh, movement component, uh, once we've done that, we're actually going to make sure that this is not null. And we're going to make sure that we have four wheels. Okay, so bring this guy out, get the wheels, bring it out again, do a not equals. Actually, bring out a, should be able to bring out a branch. Yeah, cool. Get a branch. If it's not equal to null, then it's true. to get the just to get the first wheel for now uh, actually you know what we want to check if this check the length of this thing so I want to make sure that I have four wheels I don't want to continue if I don't so um, we'll do an equals to equals four here that's cool um, I also want to actually get the um, you know what, I just want to set the, I'll just set the vehicle movement component. So in this case, alt, where's that? Yeah, it's option, whatever. Option, drag that guy out and you'll get a setter. Alternatively, you can just drag it out and click set. So if it's true, we're going to go ahead and set the vehicle movement component here. 
likewise if we have four wheels we want to be in the same place so essentially we end up with a vehicle movement component and four wheels and we know we have these things that means we can start um, actually manipulating them We do that by calling the function that we defined and implemented update wheel. We'll start with wheel index zero. So that's that left front wheel. Um, and we'll bring out, actually, let's do it here. We'll actually bring out a setter for the left front offset. No. So we want to set the offset and we want to set the rotation. So just like wire up this execution execution nodes or edges rather and then set the offset set the rotation should be pretty straightforward you start at wheel zero the result of our function is that we get an offset and a rotation so these appear here we can drag these out set the left front offset set the left front rotation and then you just do it again do it for each wheel change this to one Right front offset, right front rotation, bring these both out. This is a very exciting part of the video where I click several times in silence. All right, bring, yeah, whatever, bring these out, you know. Uh, update wheel, cool. Just make sure you're updating your wheel index. Not, not a good looking blueprint right now. All right, so last one. Make sure this is right rear, which is wheel number three. Cool, and that should do it. And what we've done here essentially is um, We've just applied the values of our wheels, like the, tr the offset and rotation of the wheels that we got from the update wheel function, which actually does the calculation for us. And we've now applied it um, to the wheels themselves. And actually it reminds me that I forgot to do something uh, in the update wheel. Okay, actually in the animation graph, these things. So the transform, there's one other setting you wanna set on these guys. So in the animation graph, go to the transform nodes. We'll have to do this for all of them. Um, you want to change this translation mode to additive. If you don't do that, the wheels don't actually spin well. We can give this a little test. I think, let's see, we take our right front rotation. Yeah, this guy. Yeah, I don't know, nobody's moving. Maybe recompile that. Yeah, cool, there we go. So you actually saw what happens if you don't use additive, nothing happens. Now you can actually spin these, which is great. Because it's a wheel. Okay, cool. Uh, I don't know if I'm forgetting anything. Let's try it though. Oh yeah. So you actually have to connect the um, blueprint to the animation blueprint. So we'll open up our trapezoid mobile and in the defaults up here, you can select the blueprint that we made. Cool. Now you can see it's more, much more car-like and the wheels spin when you press forward. That's cool. They'll turn 
you know, like that, but it doesn't drive anywhere. Uh, and this is because we haven't done our wheel setups yet. So we can do that now. Um, the first thing I'll do is actually create a blueprint for the wheel. This just inherits from vehicle wheel. So subclass vehicle wheel. Call it like a trapezoid wheel or I don't know, call it whatever. Doesn't matter. Um, <clears throat> it does matter. Uh, so you don't get components here. We just have to set up the defaults here. The radius is important. I haven't figured out actually an intelligent way of setting the radius. I've just been sort of eyeballing it and you can sort of, you can kind of measure it in your mesh. Um, so like this will tell you, this will tell you some stuff about like, I'm currently selected a wheel bone and it tells me that the approximate size is, you know, 133 by 124 by 57. You could, you can get an, an idea of what your radius is. Um, You know, so I'll make it like 20, 26, 27, something like that. Uh, that probably matters, but I don't understand. Um, I'll leave the offsets as our inertia, whatever, say 10. Increase the stiff value. I don't know. Um, yeah, so the tire type, you definitely want to set this. You could use the engine. So if you change this to engine default, show into content, you'll see the default tire type. Um, I'll actually just, yeah, I think I can use, I'll use Unreal's um, default tire type. I mean, if you, if you actually want to see how it's set, it's friction scale set to one, which is what I was going to do anyway. So I'm okay using their default. Uh, suspension should be fine. So we don't need a graph for this guy. I mean, we might, I don't know but I don't use a graph. So, okay. You get back to the trapezoid mobile, which was open. Um, <clears throat> now you just go down to where you set up, like where we set up the vehicle wheel, this wheel class, just change that to the blueprint. So that's actually gonna use our subclass wheel, which are with our settings. So we can actually control the radius, of, which we'll probably end up tweaking a couple times so cool he drives now it's not good but he does actually move and you can tell that he's floating does not turn he doesn't do the best job turning um, I th think the wheels probably need to be a bit smaller so get over here and change the radius to like I don't know 23 Cool. Also worth putting in some dumb stuff like a like a jump. Yeah. It still appears to be floating a little bit, but it works. You just, you just need to do quite, I mean, I'm going to have to do so much tuning on this thing. I just haven't gotten into it, but that's the gist of it. You can model a car, the really basic skeleton. Um, and now you can drive it. You can sort of drive around. Uh, so that's it. So I'll hopefully be posting more of these as I learn more about this process. Um, but yeah, that's all for now. Thanks.